no big deal. The release I've been one of the most excited for of the entire year is in my hands. So for today's video, we are going to be talking about Pat McGrath's newest 18 pan mothership that came out for the holiday season, the Celestial Nirvana Collection. The official extra name of this palette is the Mothership Mega Celestial Nirvana Palette from Pat McGrath Labs. If you want to see three looks, I'll give you my thoughts and swatches on each of the shades and my thought of the palette overall. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now, as you can see, I already have two looks on. I'm doing these in voiceover style because I wanted to let my husband game today. He was being loud at Saturday, but I will do another live tutorial with you at another portion of this video. But anyways, this is just one part of a very large holiday collection for Pat McGrath, and it's very odd how she's doing it. Now, she broke it up into two different parts last year. It seems that this is going to be broken up into three different parts. So the first launch of this collection was just the palette, which I am disappointed by because I wanted to just get it all at once, but also as a makeup reviewer. I'm happy because at least that breaks down the videos. I don't have to do one major video on the entire collection. I can focus on each product individually. And also it might be good for your wallet to be able to break it up instead of paying one hefty lump sum, but it's just a bit odd. But anyways, this palette launched first. Actually today, the Celestial Nirvana Quince just launched, so I have those on the way. And then at some point, the rest of the palettes, the cheek palettes and the blush and the highlight and the lipsticks are gonna launch at a later date. So I did order one of the cheek palettes on Sephora. It's available to Rouge today, so I'll have that link down below if you're interested. But this is all I got to work with today, and I'm excited that we can give this the full attention that it deserves. So you can pick this up right now on Pat McGrath's website for a hefty price of $82. That's a lot of money for a palette, but in terms of Pat McGrath, this is a good deal because you get 18 shades for $82, which her normal 10 panners are $125. So it's kind of a deal, right? That's what we're going to tell ourselves and our husbands. This palette will also be available on Sephora, I think October 7th. So I will link that in my community tab when that becomes available. You might also want to wait for the Sephora VIB sale because you could get 20% off of this. So just options, 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 but I want to show you what we're working with here. So let's get into it. So here is the box that the palette is going to come in. When she first did her official sneak peek and it was pink, I was like, oh my god, no. This palette, by the way, is made in Italy and it has an 18 month shelf life, which is really good. Normally her Italian eyeshadows are very, very good. So that's exciting. And then the palette itself is the exact same as the box. And comparing it to last year's packaging it looks the same there's subtle differences in the artwork but as you can see last year's was red this year's is pink i mean it's very hefty you know it has some weight to it considering it being a cardboard packaging it's like nice cardboard you know and then you have all of the names of the color and then it has all the details now just like last year's packaging and the year prior when it comes to these 18 pound palettes it's the exact same packaging where you're able to use this as kind of like on your vanity because the mirror will stay up if that annoys you because I do find this quite restricting and I know some of you don't like it as well just cut the ribbons off and it will bend all the way back so whatever fancies you the best go ahead and do that and then of course we have the mirror and da 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 the 18 eyeshadow colors. Now, if you're curious about my initial thoughts on this, I did film a whole entire shopper drop into my thoughts on the color story and what I was expecting. And it looks pretty majestic in person. I am not gonna lie. I'm really happy this year with the variety and mattes in here. I think that makes this palette so much more versatile than last year's. Last year's lacked in mattes. This has so many mattes and they're all very different and have a different purpose and their own place in this palette. So I'm ecstatic about that. And the, you guys don't wanna look at me, you wanna look at the palette. So here it is. And there are four different finishes in this palette. So we have silky mattes, gleaming metallics, luminous shimmers, and satin frost. So frost, shimmers, metallics, and mattes are the four formulas. There isn't any 
of the Blitz Astral or Special shades in here, but you still get very good Pat McGrath quality on this. So let's go ahead and swatch these colors so that you can kind of see them more in action. How I'm going to swatch them is by breaking these up into six. So I'm going to go these three, then these three, then these three, then these three so on and so forth. So here are the first three shades. So we have Nightfall, which is kind of like a matte brown. And I'm not doing heavy swatches because that way you're able to tell the true opacity of the shade. Then we have Bronze Infatuation. Now that's a Pat McGrath shade right there. And then Altered State, which is a matte green. And you can see it has some fallout and is powdery. I'm telling you right now, based on experience, don't let the swatches fool you. This is such a good quality green and you'll see that in the tutorials later on. Cosmic Champagne, which is kind of like a true shimmer right here. Desert Divinity, which is a matte light taupe. And then Guilty Opulence, which is a gold. Pat McGrath has to get her gold in there, but this is like a green gold. It goes really great with this green shade over here, but it's more so of a true shimmer. So this is the first six shades. You can kind of get one look. I used all six of these for the green look. Then we have Nocturnal Navy, which you can see is swatching pretty sheer. We'll see how that applies together. Eternal Amour, which is a metallic pink. It has extra creaminess to it as well. It feels more creamy than a lot of the other shimmers in this palette. And then Violet Vixen, which is a matte, vibrant purple. And this one is going to be fun. This one has potential to sting the eyelids, so just be careful with that. Lunar Lavender is a metallic light lavender shade. Fabulosity is a very bright pinky purple matte. And then Aquarian Dream is a metallic aqua blue. And this is a color that we do not get from Pat very often. Auburn Allure is a matte cranberry shade, kind of more reddish, I suppose. Heavenly Bronze is one of a kind in this palette. It is one of the more true wet metallic shades in a bronze color. It's very, very pretty, very reflective. No really fine glitters in there though. And then we have Venusian Peony, which is a matte, vibrant, hot pink. Golden Angelica is a shimmering gold shade, a little bit more on the sheer side, but it has kind of an angelic finish to it on the lid. It's very sparkly. Flame Fatale is a bright red matte. And then the very last shade that I have to swatch for you, one of the favorites that I've used so far, Starlit Copper. It is a dreamy metallic copper. And here are all 18 shades of the palette swatched for you. And overall, I think this palette swatched nice. One thing to note is that some of the mattes here swatched a little bit more sheer, maybe not as smooth as we would prefer. Just based on use, I don't think that's going to be an issue because they are a buildable formula. So while they swatch more sheer, they apply quite pigmented to the eyelid. If you use a light hand though, you can get a lighter wash, but you can also pack these color on to full opacity and they still blend beautifully without any patchiness. So the swatches are a bit deceiving here. They really look beautiful on the eye. It's just that Pat's mattes typically have a drier feel to them compared to a lot of other mattes. And I find that dryness helps the longevity of the eyeshadow in the long run. But yeah, it makes them swatch not as pretty, but they apply it very, very nice. And you'll see that in the demonstrations. So I think one thing that us Pat collectors were very excited about with this palette is it's the most unique that we've seen from her in a long time. She typically sticks to palettes that look exactly like this third of the palette right here. She loves reddish, coppery, pinky shades. She has so many palettes out with that color theme. So here, I love that we have purples and blues and cool toned neutrals and a pop of green and she just kind of gave us what the color lovers want while still staying in what I believe to be an approachable palette. So if you are overwhelmed by the looks of this palette, 
she has curated this in a way that is really digestible if you just break these up into thirds. And that's how I created my looks today so you could get a better visual on that. You know, we have more of a neutral section over here and then we also have this fun pop of green which I used today and you'll see that. Then we have purple blue section right here. And then now this is Pat's section. She couldn't not throw in a very warm pink and gold section. So this is for her. I'll take it. It's okay. You can have it. So if you just break up the palette, if you're feeling overwhelmed in thirds, it should be easier for you to visualize the look. Because this palette has such a good ratio between mattes and shimmers, you can go all over the board with this palette to create different looks and I can already visualize so many looks I want to create. It's a very inspiring palette for me so I'm feeling this color story. So let's go ahead and get into the looks that I created today. Like I said the first two that I have on I'm gonna talk through because I filmed them while my husband was gaming but I'll talk you through how everything worked for me or see how it worked. So let's get into the first look. Now this is kind of a typical Pat McGrath look. This is you using colors that she has in so many different palettes. You can literally get this look with multiple palettes within her collection, including last year's Celestial Odyssey palette. It's not a unique look, but I know Pat is loving it. This is the kind of look she loves. This is the look she makes us create a lot. So I went over to what I'm gonna call the Pat side of the palette right here. And how I got this look, so the first thing that I did was start off with Venusian Peony, which is this bright matte pink. And I blended this along the entire crease, mostly focusing it on the inner third of the crease because that's where I wanted the pink to pop through the most and be the most vibrant. And then I blended it outward to get the pink popping through underneath the entire look that we did today. It applied beautifully. You can also use this as a blush. It isn't heavily packed with pigment, but it easily built up, but I think it was important for this shade not to be heavily pigmented because of the versatility of it to be able to be used as a blush and a transition shade. Then I went in with Flame Fatale right here, which is this brighter coral red shade. Very happy to have this because I don't have a lot of reds in my collection and it is fiery. So I put that in the middle of my crease, kind of focused it a little bit lower and towards the outer half of the eye. And this one was very pigmented. It gave me that fiery element to the look and it was very good quality. I was worried that it wouldn't be but it's worked out beautifully. I very much enjoyed it. And then to get the depth in the look, I focused Auburn Allure, which is this dark shade right here in the outer corner of the eye. So I packed it onto the outer third of my eyelid and then blended it out to kind of get this winged out effect that you see here. So the first time I did it, it blended out to be pretty sheer, but I was able to layer it on and build it up to get a good level of depth. Once again, no patchiness, blended out really great. The swatches do not represent how these apply to the eye. I haven't had a problem thus far with blending. Now, on the eyelid, what I did was I took some of Starlit Copper. And it's funny because at first I didn't really want to use it, but I forced myself to for the review, and it's actually one of my favorite shimmers in here. I picked it up with a synthetic fiber packing brush, beautifully applied. It picked up the color right away, and so it's a color that you can use both with a brush and your finger, and I put this in the outer part of my eyelid, and it has such a beautiful copper finish to it. It's very pretty. I can see myself using this a lot in the palette. Then towards the center of my eyelid, I wanted to try out this special shade right here, Heavenly Bronze. It looks much more textured compared to the other shades in this palette. And I tried it with a brush. It did not work, couldn't pick up anything. So I went in with my finger to pick up the product and put it on the inner half of my eyelid. And you can see it looks really beautiful. I think it looks more textured in the pan than it does on the eyelid. It definitely looks more impressive in pan. I was expecting more reflect and more oomph on the eyelid. It's gorgeous, don't get me wrong, but I feel like I can get shades that have this effect that I don't have to dig my finger into to pick it up and get it to show up. So it was slightly underwhelming, but it's still really pretty. <laughs> and then I moved over to the lower lash line here and very simple, I layered all of the three mattes the same way I did, starting off with Venusian Peony all over the lower lash line, very pigmented, 
towards the center and back of the lower lash line, we went into Flame Fatale. And then deepening in the outer corner, we used some of Auburn Allure. And then to finish off, the last color that I hadn't yet used, I picked up some of Golden Angelica, which is more of a sheer golden shade. It's a very pretty lit shade, as well as inner corner. So I used that today for the inner corner pop and then below my brow bone. And then I also focused it a little bit on the inner part of my lower lash line just to brighten things up so that my eye wouldn't look irritated with all the red that we had in this look. And it turned out really beautiful. It's pretty simple just using those six shades. I mean, I've done a lot of looks like this. This one isn't necessarily unique, but it was a thoughtless, gorgeous look. And nothing bad to say about the shades other than Heavenly Bronze was a little underwhelming. I was expecting a little bit more, but you can see it's still really gorgeous. So very impressed with that. Let's get into look number two now, which I'm sure a lot of you want to know. And I just used exclusively the first six shades here in the palette and it was really simple. At first I was unsure of what look I wanted to do because honestly I wanted to try the greens to test it but I really can see myself using these four up here as an everyday look. If you love cool toned neutrals that is perfect so that's a part of the palette that I'm going to use a lot but for today's look I had to put the green to the test. So I started off with some of Desert Divinity, this really light cool tone taupe, and I applied that all over the crease. This is the perfect transition shade for me. I'm gonna use this color a ton, especially when I do my more cool toned looks. I'm excited to pair that with a navy shade. And then I just went in for the gusto and we went into Altered State, this matte green, because this had potential to go very, very bad based on my previous experience with other shades like this. And oh my gosh, I am so impressed. It was not patchy at all. It built up so beautifully in the outer corner of the eye and it blended out really seamless. Normally with colors like this, it takes a little bit of time to work and buff and to get that seamless blend. Had no trouble with this one right here. I didn't even want to continue the look. I just wanted to pop a gold on the lid and call it a day. It was that beautiful. But we did have to continue. So I needed to play with Nightfall a little bit because the swatches, you know, we needed to see if these were different and they are. Now this isn't the most amazing dark brown because it blended in with the green. So a good dark brown is going to hold its pigment and have coverage over top of the green. This one kind of just blended into the green and neutralized the green and then also added that extra level of depth so it was useful in the look but I was disappointed that I didn't get coverage with it but nonetheless it's a good brown it blended very easily it just might not give you that depth that you want you might need to dig into a black or a different brown but it's still really good seamless it just didn't have enough opacity to cover the green I was really excited Pat knew what she was doing when she added Guilty Opulence into this palette because it's the perfect gold green to go with the green shade. So I just apply that to the center of my lid and then we push it a little bit towards the inner corner. It's really gorgeous. It's a true, beautiful, high quality, creamy shimmer shade from Pat McGrath. No extra reflex in there or anything, but still gorgeous nonetheless. Um, I didn't really want to use this shade, but I needed to try it out. This is the shade Bronze Infatuation. Now this one has more of a sparkly finish to it compared to the others. I mean this one and this one right here kind of have a similar one but this one is less creamy I would say and I just dug my nail in. Anyways it's very pigmented. It's such a beautiful taupe shade. So I apply that to the inner third of my eyelid and it goes surprisingly well with the gold shade. Still not my favorite combo but we had to do it and it does have more microfine reflex in it compared to the gold that you're able to see in the light, but very pretty shade. It's gonna be gorgeous on its own with the neutral browns in the crease. And then I went ahead and used some of Altered State on my lower lash line, just all the way through, baby. I wanted this to be an overly green look. I thought it would be so pretty. I'm, I've just been so impressed with the quality of that. And then we went into Nightfall right here in the outer corner just to add that depth, lev depth level. Again, it blends in with the green, doesn't cover it, which worked for today's look, but wasn't what I was looking for quality-wise. 
And then to finish off the look, we went into Cosmic Champagne right here, which is going to be such a versatile shade in this palette. It's a true metallic shade. I applied that to the inner corner of my eye. It doesn't necessarily go with this look, but you'll see it's below my brow bone as well. It's a very versatile shade within this palette. It's going to be very, very useful. <laughs> those are how I got those two looks using the inner and outer third of the palette. Let's go ahead and get into a live tutorial together using the third of the palette that I've been the most excited to use. The You know, it's this purpley blue section. So give me a second. Let me pull this makeup off and we'll finish up this video together with a nice tutorial. Okay, last and final look together. <sighs> yeah, this is a look I've been dreaming of creating with this palette. Ignore how bad this looks. It will be fixed once the eye look is done. Let's go ahead and get into it. So we are gonna start off with this shade right here. It's kind of a lighter purpley pinky shade. And I'm gonna start off with this as the transition shade. So this one blends out really nice. I can get it nice and sheer to work perfectly as a transition shade. So I don't have any problems with this. And by the way, as far as the removal of the other shades, I found that the green did stain a little bit, but I wasn't wearing those eyeshadows long term. So I don't know how badly they're gonna end up staining, but but it wasn't like I spent a little bit of extra time wiping it off and then the stain completely went away. It's just something to note. So I'll update you on that as I wear this palette more. Just going to go ahead and get a nice solid blend with that. Next, we're going into this deeper, more blue-based purple right here. And by the way, these shadows, while they do have kick up, as you can see, it's nothing super obnoxious. Just tap your brush off and you'll be good. So I am going to... Put this on the inner corner. Well, this is the outer corner and I'm packing it on, but I'm also going to be putting it on the inner corner right here. So this is just to build up that depth for the halo eye that we are doing. Then work on blending these edges. And you can see the purple is blending really nice. A lot of times, a lot of purples like these can be a little bit more tricky to blend, a little bit patchy, just soft and beautiful. I mean, the mattes in this palette, I feel like are so blendable. And remember, this is one of the shades that swatched a little questionable. You see there's not an issue at all. With a refer number 14 brush, we're going into the navy shade right here. Really excited about this. And I am going to use this in the inner and outer corner. And this is going to add that final level of depth in this look. Gosh, if you want it to be even crazier, you can totally mix in a little bit of black and that's going to give you even more smokiness. This is just so pretty. Once we get lashes on as well, it's going to look stunning. So I'm going to spend a little bit of extra time making sure all of these edges are blended. Using a packer shade, we're going into the aqua blue shade, which you don't get any pickup really from, but it picks up on a brush very nicely. And you'll see we get a decent amount of pigment from the brush application. Then take an extra second to blend that shimmery blue in with the navy color. And we are going into the lavender shade right here. And we're just gonna fill in this little area that we have left. And then work on morphing the blue and the lavender together. Give me a minute to do my concealer and we'll finish off the look. Now for the lower lash line, no surprises. We're gonna start off with this shade right here. Inner and outer corner. This is gonna be the shade that's gonna be blended down the lowest. And then we're gonna use the darker purple. Ba-bing, ba-boom. And then the navy, so predictable. Just kind of get all three of those to pop through. Aqua blue. And then the lilac. And then the last and final shade that we haven't used in this palette is this color right here, which I would like to use in a larger capacity than I'm using it today, but we're just gonna use it right here. And then right here. A little dark to use as a highlight shade, but I just wanted to try it out. So I'm going to put on some liner and lashes and we'll finish up this review. Can you believe I did three looks and used every shade? Here's the final look. Let's go ahead and round up this review. As you can see by all three tutorials, I did not struggle with a single shade. So you are not going to be short for quality with this palette. It's consistent with all of the other Pat McGrath formulations. It's the same 
exact formulation as the palette last year if you picked that one up in that you know there's no special blitz astral shades but the mattes are beautiful blendable the shimmers are creamy delicious it's all good it's all good now one versus the other i've been asked for me by far i am going to pick the celestial nirvana i feel like there's so much more variety in the mattes which allows much more versatility in the types of looks that you can create in terms of being a pat mcgrath collector we are getting shades in here that we rarely if not ever have gotten from pat mcgrath we finally have the tools to create more colorful looks now you know it's not a neon red rainbow palette here but it has elements to where you can put color into your looks like what I'm wearing today. The palette last year for me I oddly struggled with. It's very pretty but it was so shimmer heavy and the only mattes were very very warm that I found that a lot of my looks ended up being the same, looking the same. I could only do so much with the palette with it being an 18 pan palette. I do not feel that restraint with this palette. Now today is the first time I used it. I'm lucky enough to have created a look with every single color color and to have used every color so it, I know they're all really great quality but just looking at this palette I can already see so many looks I want to create and they don't all need to be colorful I of course want the bold route today but I can certainly get natural wearable looks with this palette as well it is expensive it's in the $80 price range I don't recommend it for everybody if you want to test Pat McGrath for the first time and have a little bit of excess money I think this is really great it's a great way to get colors that you don't have from Pat Pat McGrath already. It really is a great addition into her collection. Now, if you are not a color wearer, you do not like bold makeup, I wouldn't waste the money on this. She just launched the five pan palettes today. Those are completely neutral and wearable. I'd go in that direction over this one because this one, yes, you can get neutral looks, but so much of the palette is going to go unused if you don't like incorporating colored eyeshadows every now and then. But I know us Pat McGrath collectors, we are excited about this. I'm very happy that the quality is so beautiful and consistent with what Pat McGrath normally does. And I'm just really, really excited now. Do I think this one beats the one from two years ago? That's up for debate because I loved the color story from two years ago, but I like, I think, the ratio of mattes to shimmer and the variety in this year's palette. So if you're on the edge, my advice, if you think you're going to use most of the shades, you feel inspired by the palette, if you think you want to splurge on it, just wait for the Sephora VIB sale, get it for 20% off, and I think you will be very, very happy. So if you guys enjoyed this review and found it helpful, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel because my next review is going to be with the five panners and hopefully the blush palette that I ordered from Sephora today. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.